2021 came with many hardships, the Taliban returning to power, supply chains disrupted, and the Delta COVID variant. Even that one ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal. But there is one tragedy that we all overlooked. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that I have found the worst movie of 2021, Lantern's Lane. Lantern's Lane is a comedy, horror, thriller, all of those things it is not. It's basically the result of any generic horror movie printing press. It has an IMDb score of 3.1 out of 10, and when I tried looking for how much they spent on this train wreck, nothing could be found, almost like they tried to sweep it under the rug. Normally I would give credit to the director and main cast, but shame, shame on all of you, especially for wasting such a good mustache. But before we begin, a break for words of wisdom by way of IMDb reviews. Geico Halloween commercial. So, remember that Geico commercial that plays around Halloween? The one in which a group of teens decide to hide behind the chainsaws in an old shed. The killer appears behind them as they run out aimlessly into a dark field yelling, Head for the cemetery. Well, imagine now that same commercial of nothing, bad decisions made in a horror movie. Well, this is that movie. You're welcome. OMG dot dot dot. No dot 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 dot. I have wasted my life. Well, a part of it watching this movie. I will never get this time back? No. Well, I suppose all actors have to start somehow. But I just wish I had skipped this film altogether and went and done something less boring instead. This has been Words of Wisdom, way of IMDb reviews. Our movie opens up to what feels like more of a remake of the Friday music video than an actual movie. And that's a common theme in this movie, just overpowering music. We are quickly introduced to two of our main characters and Layla and Missy as Missy instantly reacts to Layla arriving. Now we meet Braxton and before we get into any of the conversation, the oversaturation of music in this movie is ridiculous. Like what is this, a sitcom? Who is Braxton? How does Layla know him? No clue, this conversation is inserted here only to give the reason for why Layla has returned. That being so that she can get her stuff from her parents' house because they are getting rid of it. All while these conversations are going on, there's absolutely no background conversations, just obnoxiously loud music. I mean, I understand you don't want the background noise to overpower your main dialogue, but there has to be something. It can't just be absolute silence. I mean, there are people back there. They're, are they all just whispering so that these old high school friends can just shout their conversations to one another? God, this food is just absolutely amazing. It's probably the best chili con carne I've ever had. Well, why are you whispering? Oh, you see the people over there. Those are the main characters, so we can't be too loud. But there is one redeeming quality of this entire scene. Yes, just look at that mustache. And the one reoccurring theme of this movie begins to rear its head. Peer pressure. Okay, peer pressure is awesome. As Missy talks Layla into doing shots. Can Loretta get another drink? Duty calls. Oh my god, someone else in this bar can actually talk and not just be painted onto the background. Enter side character one and two and Shayna and her mother Janet, who we quickly learn had a sister named Haley who- She lost 30 pounds after Haley. Ah yes, way to go, Missy, making fun of the suicide of a friend's sister, because suicide is badass. very little happens conversation-wise until our good friend Jason shows up, except for the wonderful line where Layla mistakes Shayna for being her dead sister. I thought that you went into nursing. Um, no, that was Haley. And after what feels like decades of forced scripted dialogue, Missy proposes the idea that they all go out to Lantern's Lane, the old high school drinking spot for old times sakes. And once again, peer pressure is awesome. But as soon as they head to the lane, there's a spooky truck that follows close behind them. And again with the stupid music transitions, please, I'm asking you to stop. And as they pull up to the never-ending mailbox on the house of Lanterns Lane, Jason does the good old ah, something's got me routine. Way to go, Jason. Didn't see that one coming. As the group sits there trying to set the spooky vibes, Jason tells the story of the Lanterns Lane, of how the spirit of an old woman still roams the woods with a lantern searching for her husband. 
And well, does the woman appear? No, but this incredibly loud music does. As they sit there, we get some more peer pressure to get Layla up to the house. I mean, how can you say no to elephant balls? Do you have them now? Elephant balls. Ew. Yeah, that was weird. Sorry then. After arriving at the house that barely looks abandoned, Layla decides she doesn't want to go in and they should just leave. Take that, peer pressure. Until the car doesn't start and they decide to go in anyway, so... I guess peer pressure wins? Of course the house is locked up with boards on the windows so at first glance there appears to be no way in until the group decides to split up and look for a way in. We are then treated to a beautiful scene of Jason stepping in a pile of poop while Layla gives the worst bird call I've ever heard in my entire life. <coughs> Layla and Missy then regroup with the other two after Shayna has magically found a key to get into the house. The group just kind of walk around making small talk until Layla grabs the key from the counter, testing it on the front door. This has no correlation to the actual story other than to show that Layla now has the key instead of Shayna. Now cue the spooky story of the kids who were killed by a squatter in the house to try and set the mood, followed by useless background suspense music. When we also learn that Jason faked the car stalling so that they could all go into the abandoned house in the middle of nowhere. The group decides to go throughout the house and explore, with Missy going with Layla and Shayna going with Jason. We see Missy keep checking her phone as they travel through the house until Layla finally confronts her about it, asking if she's texting Braxton, when Missy makes a boomer reference. No, just a habit, probably. Yeah, as the boomers say, kids are always on their damn phones. Missy then confronts Layla about how she abandoned her in the small town when she left for college and got a job because people can't just move on with their lives and try to do something better about it. Sorry Missy, not everyone wants to be the town's one night stand. Boom. Roasted. Also, for no reason in this scene, Layla puts her hair up literally just for two minutes later to put it back down. What, is this her serious conversation hair or something? As everyone gathers back in the living room, there's a scene that makes no sense. No one says anything, yet Layla asks what they are talking about. What are you guys talking about? Shayna then decides to show them something. That something being the basement. Why you may ask? No reason. No reason was given as to why they're now in the basement, they're just down here. After leaving the house, Jason learns that this time his car won't start for real this time, like, actually for real. So with no other way out of there, they decide to go back into the house when a mysterious hooded figure goes walking by the window, sending everyone into a state of fear. Except for Missy. So now Shayna suggests that she can run out to her car so that she can retrieve her knife from her purse. Layla then suggests they just look for something to use in the house, but after searching, they say that they can't find anything. Remember the fact that they couldn't find a single thing in this house to protect themselves with. After managing to find nothing, they decide to let Shayna run out to the car to go get her knife. Shayna asks for the keys so that she can get back in when Layla actually has a good idea and tells her that they will be there to unlock the door for her when she gets back and not giving her the key. Because where else are they gonna go? Also, for whatever reason, when Shayna makes it to the side of the car, this side of the car is locked, but not the other side. What's up, Jason? You got some sort of child lock on that thing? Shayna then retrieves the knife out of her car, and instead of running back to the house after getting it, proceeds to stand there as if she was a Statue of Liberty welcoming any serial killers who would want to travel to the new world. After being killed by the mysterious hooded figure, Jason and Missy start laughing. Oh yes, the good old fake killer prank. That's my favorite, right after the bucket on top of the door and right before the Sam Pepper one. I mean, it's not like a horror movie has ever done this idea before. Word for word, bar for bar. Missy reveals that the masked man is actually Braxton, and that's who she was texting the entire time. Until Braxton comes stumbling out of the tree line, perfect timing by the way, and is actually dead on the ground. If you're Patrick, then who's that? The group once again gets split up with Jason and Layla going into the house, causing Jason to get stabbed in the leg while Missy runs off to somewhere. Layla dresses Jason's wound and says they have to try and find Missy and help her, only no one knows where she ran off to. Oh wait, yeah we do, she ran to the backyard. <laughs> Missy then decides to move to another hiding area because she can't see the killer when he's five feet away from her. I don't think she sees him. Bruh. I mean, did somebody forget to mention that Missy is blind in one eye or something? I mean, how does she not see this guy? 
Layla is worried that this guy might hear Missy, but there's no need to worry because this guy must also be deaf because he can't hear her walking on gravel and dead leaves just five feet away from him. I can't hear you! Layla then gets the idea to use the car keys to make the car alarm distract the killer, giving time for Layla to do the world's worst bird call again. What the hell was that? It almost sounded like a bird forgot how to bird. I don't- what? Layla then motions for Missy to run away, but Missy decides that she's just going to run back to the house. She manages to find herself at the back of the house, again, where she talks to Layla through the house vents, and not very quietly, I might add. And remember how earlier when they searched the entire house, and Layla even searched the basement, and they were unable to find anything to protect themselves? Well now, Layla's found a pipe. In the basement. I don't know. <laughs> the killer comes around the side of the house, stabbing Missy in the back and slicing Layla's arm before taking the pipe away from her. After patching up Missy, Layla and Jason try to figure out who could be doing this when this seems like the absolute worst time to have this conversation. Missy, in her dying state, points out that if Braxton is here, dead, then so is his car. Jason and Layla then create a plan for Jason to distract the killer at the front of the house so that Layla can sneak out the back to get the keys off of Braxton's body. The only problem with that plan is that Braxton is also at the front of the house. Jason then begins to distract the killer at the front of the house while Layla searches Braxton's pockets for his keys, unable to find them. Layla tries to make it to the car to try and retrieve Shayna's knife, but the killer is there too. Luckily, Jason sees this and manages to distract the killer long enough for Layla to get away and run to Braxton's car in the woods. After managing to make it to Braxton's car, Layla gets in only to see that it's actually Shayna and her mom working as a team to be the killer. It turns out that Shayna's mother Janet blames the group for her daughter's suicide, so she has planned this whole night for years trying to get revenge. We find out that the real reason Shayna wanted the keys earlier was so that she could give it to her mom and she could go in there and kill everyone. Janet then stabs Shayna so that she can go inside the house and convince them that she managed to survive the attack and try to finish the job from the inside. After the two leave, Layla searches a car for the car keys and finds them, but also finds a Glock. America, yeah. Layla is now confronted with the choice of driving back to safety or going back and saving her friends. Shayna makes it back to the house and Jason lets her back in thinking that she's been injured and needs help. Jason goes to look for bandages to stop the bleeding on Shayna and Shayna is left with Missy as she then stabs her causing blood to come out of her mouth. Now why did I mention that last part? Because Shayna wipes away the blood with her bloody hands to try and conceal the fact that she is dead. But when we see Missy's face again there isn't any blood at all. She must have ShamWow fingers or something. Are you following me camera guy? The other 50% the color starts to come up. Before Jason rejoins the two, he realizes that Shayna never questions how Jason and Missy got stabbed, and he realizes that something's up. Upon returning, Shayna asks where Layla is, and Jason smartly says he doesn't know, thinking that Shayna might be up to something. Shayna's mom car pulls up, and before Jason has any time to question it, Shayna states that thank god that must be her mom, when she never said anything about getting a text out to her mom, but she has to quickly try to cover it. Upon entering the house, Shayna's mom is immediately hostile, and Shayna confesses how she's already killed Missy, leading to her mom saying big deal y'all never cared when my daughter died but now we see that layla at the same time is now sneaking back into the house through the back door janet sends shayna to go find layla and walks right past the staircase that layla is currently at the bottom of and somehow doesn't see her good thing peripheral vision doesn't exist shayna then goes down the stairs and sees that the back door is open meaning that obviously layla must have gone out the back door after not being able to find layla janet calls shayna pathetic what mother of the year material we've got here am i right starting to think that Haley didn't just kill herself because of the girls at school Janet then proceeds to blame them for the death of her daughter before Layla shows up holding the mysterious hood. Layla then says that Janet is the reason that Haley killed herself and not them. <laughs> Causing the mom to go mad and rush Layla, only to get popped by the Glock. Shayna then tries to say that they can all forget about it and just pretend that she didn't kill Missy. But Layla doesn't care and shoots her too. No. Now I'm running out of bullets as you can see that the slide is now all the way back. Hopefully they don't get back up and- 
Never mind, magical gun with infinite ammo and magic bullets, I guess. Also, this is not a bullet hole, this is a butthole. <laughs> As Layla and Jason now walk away from the house down the road that they came from, Layla says Missy never saw the lantern. Jason replies saying there's always next weekend. No Jason, there is no next weekend for Missy because she's dead on the couch in the abandoned house that you two just left her in. As they walk off screen you can see in the background the lady with the lantern. Why? Because why not? <laughs> I don't, I don't under- I believe that I have proven my case as to why Lantern Slaying should be considered the worst movie of 2021. If you agree, please drop a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If not, tell me what movie you think is in the comments section below. If you wish to subject your friends and family to the horror that is Lantern Slaying, send them this video and see their reactions. Until then, goodbye, and I will see you all next time.